I think I've mentioned before that I listen addictively to recorded books. Good books, bad books, that is irrelevant as long as the plot keeps me putting the new CD into the player. However, I am not so tolerant when it comes to the readers of these books. If you've listened to recorded books, you know that a good reader can make even a pathetically written book sound brilliant, and a bad reader can make a brilliant book sound inane. For example, take a recently published uh, book about Abraham Lincoln, written by a highly respected historian. This author's prose is crisp and clear. Her information is meticulously researched. Um, the characterizations are vivid and fascinating. This was exactly what I needed to distract myself from obsessive thoughts about Ebola. The story begins with this sentence. On May 18, 1860, the day when the Republican Party would nominate its candidate for president, Abraham Lincoln was up early. But here is how that sentence was actually read. On May 18, 1860, the day when the Republican Party would nominate its candidate for president, Abraham Lincoln was up early. This is the so-called Mid-Atlantic accent. I would like to take this reader out to the Mid-Atlantic and throw her in. But I tell myself, don't be so judgmental. Other people, not me, but plenty of other, other people would find that voice pleasant and cultured. Although these would be people who themselves speak as if they were auditioning for the role of Mrs. Teasdale in Duck Soup. This book is 754 pages long, which amounts to 42 hours of listening to the mid-Atlantic accent. The reader continues. When asked in 1860 by his campaign manager, John Locke Scripps, to share the details of his early days, he hesitated. Why Scripps? It is a great price of folly to attempt to make anything out of early life. It can all be condensed into a single sentence you will find in Gray's Elegy, the short and simple annals of the poor. She is quoting Abe friggin' Lincoln. The man learned to read by candlelight. He earned his living splitting logs. Why does she make him sound like James Lipton from inside the actor's studio? But it's my own fault. I should just get the print version and read the book to myself out loud. There's another problem with books on CD. And I say books on CD rather than e-audio books because Call me overcautious, but I hesitate to jeopardize my already aging hearing by going around with earbuds assaulting my tympanic membranes for hours at a time. Anyway, I find as I prepare for bed that if I plop a recorded book into the CD player, something utterly without suspense like an Agatha Christie novel, read by a British reader with a contemplative, soothing accent, I can slip into a peaceful, worry-free sleep before the reader gets to track two. And then I can start with track two on the following night and get through the whole book in about six months, although with a somewhat spotty understanding of the plot. However, that's all theoretical. In fact, what actually happens is this. I'm just drifting off to the words, ah, yes, Miss Marple, it's quite an old tree. It's called a black elm, kelm, 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 kelm. I start awake, my heart is pounding. I expect Jack Nicholson to crash through the door with an ax. This would be the downside of books on CD. The only solution is to call up your local library every day and find out which new books on CD arrived that day, and then run down to the library and check them out while they're still in mint condition. Apart from that, you'll just have to do it the old-fashioned way. Read the damn thing.